Well, thank you, Anton, for that uh, really great rendition of a beautiful song, All Glory Be to Christ. And thank you also, Becky and Sarah, for teaching us about the genealogy, the family tree of Jesus. And it's amazing to think that we're all part of God's family by faith in Jesus Christ. But I want to talk to you about that song we just heard Anton sing, All Glory Be to Christ. It's set to a very familiar tune. You probably recognized it. The tune of Auld Lang Syne. That's an old uh, Scots uh, Gaelic phrase that means old long since. We don't know who wrote the song. Most think it was the Scottish poet Robert Burns. But the phrase old long since or old lang syne means uh, something like days gone by or the good old days, we might say. And it's a song about two friends toasting memories, the good times they've had together, the friendships they've made over the years, looking back. We always sing this at New Year's because it's the appropriate time to sing it, looking back on the year. And it's become sort of an anthem for a new year. And I love that song because I always think of the ending to It's a Wonderful Life. You know, all of Bedford Falls jammed into George Bailey's house around the piano, singing Auld Lang Syne, a great ending to a great movie. But if I'm honest, uh, sometimes we take a familiar tune and we change the words and it doesn't always work out very well. It can sound a little cheesy and we would prefer the, the original words. But every now and then, putting new lyrics to a familiar tune does something really powerful. It adds a different dimension, a depth to it. And that's how I felt the first time I heard, All Glory Be to Christ. The familiarity of the tune and the power of the rich biblical references just moved me. It moves me still today, every time I hear it and sing it. And I want to walk us through that song as perhaps a better anthem for us to sing on the cusp of a new year. You know how old Lang Syne begins. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? That would be a tragedy. That would be sad if you forgot your old friends, if you just put all the memories out of mind and never thought about them again. That, that wouldn't be a good thing, but it sometimes happens. But listen to how all glory be to Christ uh, goes. Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive. Unless the Lord does build the house, in vain its builders strive. It's a very different uh, sentiment, isn't it? Should nothing of my, my efforts or legacy survive? What's the point of it all if I'm building my legacy apart from Christ? So it would be sad if you forgot your old friends, but it would be a far greater tragedy if you spent your life working to build your legacy apart from God with no glory of Christ in mind. That would be a greater tragedy, and that's what the song is getting at. In fact, it's quoting Psalm 127, verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. And then the song, the next part of that first verse goes, To you who boast tomorrow's gain, tell me, what is your life? What a great question that is for us to ponder on the eve of a brand new year. What is your life? Boasting about tomorrow's gain. We do that, don't we, on, on, a, on New Year's Eve. We think about what next year is going to bring, as if somehow just the turning of a calendar page is going to make it all better. What is your life? And then he he. He goes on, actually quoting from James chapter 4, a mist that vanishes at dawn, all glory be to Christ. In fact, let me just read that section for you out of James chapter 4. We just finished a sermon series on James not long ago. James 4 uh, verses 13 through 15 puts it this way, Come, now you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. That's a direct quote in the song. The point of seeing your life as a mist that is here for a while and vanishes is not to make you feel hopeless or fearful or anxious, but to recognize that our lives are so short, they don't really have value in and of themselves apart from the glory of Christ. Living your life in light of the glory of Christ gives your life significance and meaning is what the scripture is saying, and the song beautifully is saying as well. The song goes on then, and uh, the next phrase in the chorus is, All glory be to Christ our King. And the second verse picks up this idea of Christ as our King by quoting from the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. It says, uh, His will be done, His kingdom come, on earth as is above, uh, who is Himself our daily bread, praise Him, the Lord of love. 
Well, that's speaking about the kingdom of God coming on earth. So it's simply a prayer to pray for God's daily provision in your life and to trust that his kingdom will come as you praise him. The, the, all glory be to Christ, our King. Now, the next section of this verse is perhaps my favorite. It points to the heart of the gospel. And I want you to listen to these lyrics once more. Let living water satisfy the thirsty without price. We'll take the cup of kindness yet. All glory be to Christ. Now, there's some interesting images in there. Let living water satisfy the thirsty without price. In John chapter 4, verse 14, Jesus calls himself the living water, the water of life, and those of us who drink from him will have a well of eternal life flowing up within us that will never run out, will always satisfy. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, we find out that uh, at the end of the story of Jesus, the end of history, where we're all headed, who have faith in him, there is living water without price, without payment. It's an incredible image. But this idea of the cup of kindness, and by the way, that's something that's actually in Old Lang Syne, the cup of kindness. And in that song, it simply means the cup of friendship, of kindness to, to the good old days. But here it means something much deeper. The point the song is making and the scripture makes is this. We can drink the cup of God's kindness and mercy and grace because Christ drank the cup of God's judgment over sin for us. You remember the story in Luke 22, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night before he goes to the cross, praying, Look, Father, if there's any other way, take this cup away from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. He drank the cup of God's judgment over sin, our sin, which we deserved. We are supposed to drink that cup, but he drank it for us so we might be, receive the cup of his kindness. This is what we do whenever we come to the communion table. We're drinking of the cup of salvation of his mercy and love and kindness. What an incredible thing. We can take the cup of kindness yet, still today, because Christ took the cup of God's judgment for us. And the final verse looks forward to what God will do in Christ when he returns, the glory of Christ returning. So think about this for a minute. The first verse, you know, looking back, should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive, what's the point of your life without Christ? The middle verse is looking, at the, it's the Lord's Prayer, daily provision and trusting in His grace for the forgiveness of sins. And the final verse, looking forward. Isn't that what we do on New Year's? We look backward at all that has happened. We take stock of where we are and we look forward. Well, that's what the song is calling us to do spiritually as well. In these final verses, the, almost all of the words are taken out of Revelation chapter 21. Uh, when on that day, the great I am, the faithful and the true, the Lamb who was for sinners slain is making all things new. I love that. In Revelation 19, verse 11, we find out that Jesus Christ is called the faithful and the true. He's on a white horse, and faithful and true is written on his thigh. And in Revelation 5, verse 6, we see Christ as the Lamb on the throne, looking as one who was slain. Those are the images, right? The great I am, the faithful and the true, the Lamb who was for sinners slain. What's he doing? He's making everything new. In fact, let me just take a minute and read to you from Revelation chapter 21. Uh, and you'll get a sense of, of what's all in this, this last verse of this song, which I love so much. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy. And true, faithful and true, making all things new. This is what the song is when we sing it. And I get emotional every time I sing this. When on that day, the great I am, the faithful and the true, the lamb who was for sinners slain is making all things new. Behold, our God shall live with us and be our steadfast light. Do you know that Revelation teaches us that on that day we will not need the sun or any other light because Christ himself will be our light? 
and we shall heir his people be. All glory be to Christ. When you stop and think about, I can drink the cup of God's kindness and mercy and love because he drank the cup of judgment. And he will return to be with us and we'll be his people forever. He'll be, he's the faithful and the true one. What response is there except all glory be to Christ? It's the right response, the chorus, not just on our new year, but, but in every moment of our lives. All glory indeed belongs to Christ. This is not a wishful thinking or nostalgia looking back over old memories. This is the certainty of what Christ has done and will do. All glory be to him. And really, when I sing this song with a familiar tune, I feel as if it's the song we are meant to sing. The, the, the proper true words, in a sense. It touches a longing in me. Maybe it does as you as well. Or maybe you have other songs that stir a, a longing in your heart. And I think about that. C.S. Lewis says that all of our longings really are wrapped up in our longing for God in Christ. He says that our longings can be thought of as the scent of a flower we have not found, the tune, the, the, the sound of a tune, the music of a tune we have never heard, and the uh, news from a country we've never visited. So we long for something that we're made for, but we haven't yet fully tasted it yet, is what he's saying. Uh, and I think that's true. Our God will live with us and dwell with us, and we have this Holy Spirit in us now. He's with us, but not fully yet. He is the Lamb who was for sinners slain, but He has not yet made all things new. We live between those times with this longing. In fact, to quote Lewis again, he says, there are far greater things ahead of us than any that lie behind. Well, maybe that'll be an encouragement to you on the eve of a new year. There's so much greater ahead of us. And I don't just mean 2024. I mean into eternity. Far greater is that which lies ahead of those who are in Christ, His glory, than any that lies behind. Perhaps you're glad to have 2023 be done. You're ready to turn that page and move on. Uh, perhaps you're excited about what, the, what God is going to do and is already doing in the new year. Well, good. That's good for you. But for those of us who are in Christ, the anthem of this, the, 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 the refrain of this song is the perfect anthem for us this year. All glory be to Christ our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign shall never cease. All glory be to Christ. This year, next year, and for all eternity. So with that said, let's Let's sing this again, and Lois is going to lead us as we sing this again as our, as our song to Christ, our glory, on the eve of a brand new year. All glory be to Christ indeed. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that our lives have meaning and significance in, in and through you. And we want our lives to be lived for your glory, not ours, this year. Thank you that we can drink the cup of your grace and kindness because you took the cup of, of judgment for our sin. And praise you, God, that you are the Lamb who was for a sinner slain. You are and will make all things new. Again, Lord, we want our lives to be lived for your glory and not our own. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.